So today I am painting the WizKids Paint Night Kit Manticore. Um, this was going to originally be something they shipped out to everybody and the stores would have an in-person paint night where everyone would get one of these, paint it, so on and so forth. Um, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, um, we're not able to have an in-store event like that. So instead, these are just going to be available for sale at Galactic, or if you're watching on YouTube, your local game store, um, for $25. And at Galactic, we're doing a competition, basically. Uh, you buy one, you paint it up, and then you send in pictures to the store um, before August 5th. The person who is deemed to be the best one will win $50 in store credit. The second place one will get $25 in store credit. Um, and yeah, so let's take a look first. I thought I wouldn't open mine until it was actually on stream just so we can all have that experience together. So I'm going to open it up here. Allegedly, there are one miniature. Well, we can confirm that. I can see him. Uh, and then 12 paints, two brushes, a water pot, and then we're supposed to use the plastic blister inside there to use as a palette. So, all right, here we go. I'm gonna pop this open. Pull him out. Maybe. Yep, there he is box get out of the way he looks lovely he's a little bent that's okay um just like all their miniatures in this uh in this um brand of the nullzor's marvelous miniatures they're pre-primed you can start painting them straight out of the box no other processes required so then i'm just gonna try to get the rest of this box open here all right so we got the base in here somewhere rip this apart there's the base um i suppose this is our this is our palette we could use excellent uh, oh okay it's actually better than i originally thought all right so inside we have two brushes a th very thin one that's nice um with a little plastic tip to protect it that fell off that's okay uh we have a water cup which is resealable excellent and if i can get the other brush out without it defeating me all right get the box out of here all right box is gone we got two brushes two brushes so they both do have a little plastic thing i seem to have already lost one but as you can see you got a a very thin brush and a slightly thicker brush. They are, they're WizKids branded. You can see that. Uh, there we go. They're multi-purpose apparently. All right. So then we have 12 paints. They're just in the little mini pop top things. 12 paints. Um, yeah, they look pretty cool. They're Vallejo, so that's a quality company. So that's cool. Um, and then it's not just a little piece of plastic like I thought. Get that out of here. It actually is. You have a little palette down here for mixing your paints. So that's awesome. So I'm just gonna pull these out of here. And originally in the, um, in the if we had had the actual event, um, we would, everyone would get this and you'd have these colors and you paint it that night and that's it. Um, obviously for now, since you can just go buy one, take it home, you can use any paints you want. But for just for sake of funness, I guess, I'm going to use just these colors on this miniature today. First things first, I'm going to pop him out of the base, or the base out of the bag, rather. And I'm just going to glue him on, sort of like that. That'll work. This will just make it easier for my paint handle to grab onto him. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue down here around the edges. A little bit in the middle and glue them right on there that'll take a second to dry all right and while that's happening um i am just going to take a pair of clippers here and cut these paints apart because i do not want them attached to the the whole uh, line here while i'm trying to use them 
I recommend if you're going to use these paints that you do the same. Um, if you, you pop one top and then nudge the whole line and paint goes everywhere and it's no good. So I'm just going to pop them off here, making sure not to cut into the containers, but just to cut them off of each other. That's done. And this one. Oh, there's multiple. All right, all right. I think there's supposedly a guide somewhere on their website, perhaps, on how to paint these in the specific colors. We're not worried about that, though. I'm just going to wing it, see what we get. I don't think I've ever painted a manticore before, so this should be interesting. All right. All righty. So there's that. Just going to... Can't tell if this bottle partially opened or if it's just some. Yep, okay. Sepia wash is good. All right. He drying his base yet? Good enough. So I'm just going to pop him in my paint handle here. Uh, if you need one of these, they are available at Galactic. They are absolutely not a necessity, though. You can just hold your miniature. I'm just more comfortable using him like that. It also allows my hand to stay out of the shot as much as possible so you can actually see the miniature so i'm gonna start here with my my brand new vallejo paints and i'm also just side note i'm only going to use the brushes that are included just to see how they are just gonna get them wet first straight out of the box they're probably a little stiff get some water on them all right now let us finally begin painting oh filthy brown in the back here all right, so I'm just going to zoom in so you guys can see the paint job a little better. Get my, woo, get my background all figured out. All right, cool. So, looking at our colors, keep these on screen so you guys can see the choices I'm pulling from here. Um, obviously, the two washes, we're going to use those after some colors already down you could actually use them first come to think of it but so then i think i'll start with the skin colored stuff which is going to be his face um and yeah just his face so i'll start with a darker skin tone oh there's three skin tones oh this is interesting all right dwarf skin's getting chucked we're gonna start with heavy skin tone gonna give this a good shake pop it open here And go to town. Um, I'm not using my little water cup. You are welcome to. I already have a larger water cup sitting off to the side, so I'll be using that. All right, and then I'm just gonna I'm gonna use the paint out of the top of this, not uh not in here. Dip your dipping your paintbrush in there is a recipe for disaster. You get paint up in the the metal part of your paintbrush, and that can eventually cause bad things to your happen to your paintbrush. So I'm just going to apply this all over the skin here. Um, this is Vallejo paint, like I said, so we know that part's going to be good. Um, it's not a different recipe than any other Vallejo paint. And Vallejo paint has quite the reputation for being quality, so that won't be a problem. The brushes we're going to see about um, so far. One color in. They're working out pretty well. Um... If for some reason you don't like these paintbrushes or you just want to have something else, um, you can get others at Galactic or your local game store again if you're not watching this live. Um, but I think these will work out just fine. You could also throw a bigger brush in, which honestly we might do for, uh, for the wings and stuff, but it's not absolutely necessary by any means. So as you can see, this paint uh, covers very well on one coat. Um, these pre-primed miniatures are some excellent technology that allows you to not have to do anything to your figures straight out of the box. Um, if you try painting this paint onto a unprimed, un just straight out of the box miniature, Normally, you would have problems. So that's pretty nice. All right, so there's this face coated in that heavy skin tone or whatever it was called. Now I think I will do 
his body. I'm going to do his body in the heavy ochre. It's going to rinse off my brush, wipe off the extra paint, close the heavy skin tone back up. So going into heavy ochre, and I'm going to do his body in this color. Um, possibly his wings, but I don't think so. So let's just grab this heavy ochre and start in on the skin. I do need to think about what we're going to do for the mane. We'll come back to it. I'm sure we'll get there. So I'm just going to paint all his skin. Oh, I said don't pull it out of the pot, and then I did. Genius. Pull it out of the top. And like I said, for the uh, for the competition associated with these guys, um, you pick one up for $25. You get all the stuff included. Then you paint it by August 5th. Send some pictures to the store. Judging will take place, and if you are deemed to be the winner, you will get $50 in store credit. If you are deemed to be the runner-up, you will get $25 in store credit. So basically, if you uh, if you get first place, you get some extra money, and if you are second place, you got a, got a free set of paint, free miniature, and some free brushes, so can't go wrong there. And even if you think you aren't the best painter in the world, and obviously someone out there will be better than you, and they might beat you, just throw that mindset right out the window. Um, for this competition, it's not a super serious competition. We're going to be judging based on our favorite model. Not necessarily the best paint job, not necessarily the most technical skill applied to the miniature, but our favorite. So if you're very technically skilled and you paint a really cool model, you'll win. And if you're not so technically skilled, but you paint a really cool model, you'll win. So it's open to all sorts of people. We do run some more serious paint competitions in our, um, in our local miniature gaming group. Um, those are based on pure technical skill. But for this kind of thing where everyone might want to get involved, we're just going on favorite. So a someone who painted just how it is on the box, but very technically proficiently, would, for instance, probably lose to someone who painted a rainbow manticore. But not with as many technical skills, because rainbow manticores are cooler. So this would be, like I said, a spot where you could potentially get a different color, or sorry, a different brush out. You could get a different color, but a different brush out, just a larger brush to help you cover this area faster. But even with just this brush, it's uh, it's covering pretty, pretty quickly. Um, I might switch to a bigger brush just to, for the sake of the stream. All right, I've talked myself into it. I will switch to a bigger brush just for the sake of the stream so that you guys aren't watching me paint heavy ochre for the next half hour, or whatever it is. All right, so I just got a, another paintbrush here, slightly larger. I'm just gonna keep base coating this heavy ochre color. I have no idea what color manticores should be, um, but I'm going with whatever paint pops out at me at the time. This color looked sort of like a lion's skin color. He's got a mane like a lion. So it's going to be this color. Oh, did I say August 5th? Yikes. My bad. September 5th. Send your pictures in by September 5th. Thank you, chat. Mr. Statman. I, uh, yeah. You know, it's August right now. I needed a date, August 5th. Yeah, September 5th. Saturday, September 5th. I really hope September 5th is a Saturday. I'm pretty pretty sure I checked earlier, and it is. But, uh, yeah, send your pictures in by September 5th to win your... Win, have a chance at winning $50 in store credit. What company paints am I using? Uh, so I'm, they're technically Vallejo, but they are the... Paints that came with this figure in the 
uh, paint night kit that uh, WizKid sent us. But they are, you can get all these colors in the Vallejo line um, in a full, full bottle. Um, I don't have a Vallejo one handy, but it comes a bottle similar to this. This isn't a Vallejo bottle, but just a normal dropper bottle like this. All these colors come in these kind of dropper bottles. But for this paint night kit, they don't send you the full bottles. They just send you little half bottles. But the paint is identical. And they are Vallejo. Or some people say Vallejo. I've heard that. I'm American. I just pronounce the letters in order. Ignorance is bliss. All right. Just get underneath the feet here. Some of these spots you will need to go do a second coating real quick, but this, this for being yellow, this has covered incredibly well. Um, sometimes yellow will try to fight you and not cover very well, but this has been this has been an excellent covering yellow. Just get that real quick. Um, I think they'll do the tail in a different color. I think the tail is supposed to be. I can't remember. A chimera is a mix of a whole bunch of different animals, and I never remember which one is which. Oh, we got pronunciations in the chat. Vale. Vale Joe. <laughs> well, Anthony in chat thinks it's pronounced Vale Joe. I disagree. That would be the American, the very American pronunciation. I guess I should say I'm American and I pronounce the letters in order, but I'm not that far gone. Okay, so uh, that's the skin done. I think I'll do the the mane next. And for the mane, I think I'll use... No, I'm going to do the wings. This color's jumping out at me. Heavy Sienna. I'll do the wings. Just going to pop this open. Oh, yeah, that's a nice color. Really nice color. That's a Bob Ross color right there, if I've ever seen one. All right, so I'm going to just cover the wings here with this color. And then I'm going to think about what needs to be done to the mane. And there are not a huge amount of colors in here, but you could always mix. I'm not going to mix personally, but you could mix and you can also use different colors for different things. So I could paint the wings in this color and then highlight it with say dwarf skin, but then I could paint the mane in this color and highlight it with bone white and they would look very different. So that's always something to keep in mind is you don't necessarily need to mix paint physically, like take two colors and mash them together, but you can mix applications of paint to get different outcomes. And you could also, you could even go one step further. You could, I could paint the wings and the mane in this color and then do a heavy highlight on the mane and a smaller, less defined highlight on the wings. So it's all just about making them look different even if you only have a couple colors to play with. But I think 12 will be absolutely plenty for this model. Especially they give you two washes. That's awesome. A lot of times with these uh, these prepackaged kits, it'll be like, here's paints and here's black wash. Good luck. But they've given me flesh wash and sepia wash, so that'll be awesome. We will take full advantage of that. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. I think it's technically Vallejo. Vallejo? Man, I'm sticking with Vallejo. There's L's in there. I'll pronounce the J's like they're Spanish. I believe Vallejo is a Spanish company. Uh, I could be wrong about that. 99% sure they're based in Spain. Um, I'll pronounce the J like it's meant to be and keep the L's American. How about that? A happy medium. Compromise. All right, so now I'm going to paint the other wing. Are they layer type paints or do you have to mix 
of texture types or basing. Nope, they're all layer except for two um, two washes. So for texture, if you wanted texture on them, you would have to get something else. However, um, all these models have sort of a textured base already, so he looks like he's standing on a bunch of rocks. Um, that's the same with all of these, uh, this brand of miniatures. So technically, you could just paint those rocks. Um, if I have time, I'll give him a little bit more of a fancy base at the end just to mix things up. Um, let's see, what do we have here? It would actually, there is no black included in this set. That's interesting. So it would be hard to make gray for rocks, but really looking at rocks, most rocks are more brown than gray anyway. So, but you could easily grab yourself a bottle of black paint at Galactic or just grab some black paint at Walmart even and mix that in with uh, some of the white here and paint your rocks if you felt like it. Um, and now that I think about it, I don't think Vallejo actually made, makes texture paint. I know they make texture compound, um, but I don't know how similar that is to, like, Games Workshop Citadel's texture paint. So that might be why it's not included in this kit. Might be a little more technically involved than simply put it on your brush and put it on the miniature. I could be wrong about that. It may have just been a decision to just put as many paints in as possible and not do anything else i don't know i unfortunately am not on the decision making board of vallejo just getting in here get this wing if anyone would like to put me on the decision making board of vallejo i'll happily accept the position as long as i can stay here in georgia doing it Absolutely not a problem. All right. Just get the back of his wing here. Just double checking all the parts of the wing, making sure we covered all these spots like this. Just a little bit of white showing through. Like that and there. All right. And then right here is a little thin, so we'll just go back over it again. Uh, the Vallejo Company was established in 1965 in New Jersey, USA. In the first years, the company specialized in the manufacture of film color, water-based acrylic colors for animated films, cartoons. In 1969, the company moved to Spain. In those years, many important cartoon studies were based in Europe. Studios were based in Europe. Gotcha. Cool. So originally from New Jersey, but moved to Spain four years? Four years after their inception. Gotcha. Very, very interesting. All right, so that about finishes the wings. I'm holding off on painting the mane because I don't know exactly what color I want it yet. So that's why I'm kind of avoiding it. Normally I'd want to get the wing done first, but in this case, or get the mane done first, I mean, but I'm not exactly sure what I need yet. Um, I think I'm going to do it, actually, before I do that, while I'm still thinking about it, I'm going to touch up the skin real quick with some more heavy ochre. Who would have thought you were technically right, though, in a way? Yep, I was technically right. They are now in Spain, but maybe not originally Spanish. But, of course, we are a country of immigrants. It is very possible that it may have been a Spaniard living in New Jersey when he founded the company and then decided to go home. I do not know. But either way, they're based in Spain now. Therefore, they probably pronounce their, their letters like the Spanish do. All right, just touched up the skin there. Now I'm going to go in and paint the mane. I'm going to do that with filthy brown, which is slightly different than heavy ochre. It's just a slight more yellowy than the heavy ochre is. Pop this open. Alrighty. And I'm going to go back to my, my brush they provided me, the medium one. And just cover the mane. And there's these spikes in the mane. Um, I, I'm just going to coat them all in yellow. Then I'm going to come back and highlight them in a different color than I highlight the fur. 
or the hair of the mane. Why does it seem like every every other stream we come back to a conversation about hair versus <coughs> fur? <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm just going to coat this, making sure not to get any of this yellow on the skin tone. We haven't done very much detail on the skin yet, but we so we could always come back and fix it. But rather to make or rather have to go back as few times as possible. So I'm just going to get or go around here very carefully. But also making sure that I get full coverage on all the bits of his mane. Well, that was a mistake. Sometimes your brush just jumps with a life of its own. We'll fix that later. Not a big deal. So just keep working around the face here. Make sure the mane is completely covered. Um, and while I'm doing this, I'll say it again in case people have come in late and not didn't hear the uh, the spiel in the beginning. Um, this is a model from the WizKids Paint Night Kit. Um, you get this Manticore, all the 12 paints, two paintbrushes, a water cup, and a little paint mixing palette. Um, this was originally going to be an in-person event that we did at the store, sponsored by WizKids. However, with the pandemic, we are unable to have an in-person event responsibly. So we are moving it to an online event. You go into the store, pick up your kit for $25, go home, paint it. You can use the paints inside. You can use other paints. You can use whatever you want to paint it. You can use whatever brushes you want to paint it, all sorts of stuff. Um, you paint it. You send pictures of your fully painted model back into the store uh, by September 5th. And then we will judge the winner. Um, we're judging not based on technical skill, but purely on our favorite miniature. So go nuts, make them look awesome. Uh, the winner of that will get uh, $50 in store credit. Um, and the runner up will get $25 in store credit. They are available right this very second at Galactic for $25. So if you're, you're interested in a paint competition, or honestly, even if you have no interest in the competition and you just want a, a pretty cool model 12 paints and two brushes, maybe to get your kids started painting, or if you yourself want to get started in painting, this is a great way. $25 to get you everything you need. This is an absolute perfect way to get it. But if you happen to finish your miniature by, uh, by September 5th, even if you're brand new, make sure to send those pictures in because you never know. We might like yours the best. All right, just finishing up the main. There's a lot of main on this guy. There's, there's got to be a joke somewhere in there about states and main sitting on top of other states or something. I don't know. It's there. The smarter people of the world figure it out. Alrighty. Almost done with the main. So, like I was talking about before, how you can differentiate your colors. We're going to have to heavily differentiate the main from the body. Because they are almost the same color. The main is a little bit more yellow. Especially in person. Not sure. Yeah, it comes across on stream, sort of. Um, it is just a little bit more yellow, so we're going to have to go in with some highlights and some washes and really make sure that we differentiate these two things. Because if you look at a picture of a lion in real life, um, or if you happen to be lucky enough, look at a real lion in person, um, their mane is very a very different color than the rest of their fur. So we want to make sure to differentiate that. I did see a liger in Florida. Sadly, it didn't look like a manticore. Well, that's just because you were looking at it. The manticore features 
only come out when the humans aren't looking at them, obviously. Unless, of course, you're in a dungeon with fellow adventurers trying to find treasure. Then they'll come out and try to get you. But out in the real world, yeah. They're not going to show their true colors. Get this tail out of the way. The wonderful thing about these miniatures is they're bendy. The plastic is bendable, so you can just, like I'm doing, bend this tail out of the way. Paint what you need to paint, and then let it come back in, and it's not a problem. So because these colors are so similar, the skin and the mane here, I'm not being too precious about keeping this color off the skin. If it goes on the skin a little bit, it'll just help us blend the edge together a little bit. Not a big deal. So that, I believe... Nope, not quite. Just a little bit more mane under here. Just going to get in there. Oh, there's a little bit of white showing in there. All right, now I believe we are done with the main. Got it all painted. Yep, all right, cool. So we're going to move on now. I think I'm going to move on to the tail, just so we get all our base paint layered down first, and then we'll move on to highlights. I'm actually going to touch up the foot here with the heavy ochre again. If I can get it open. Sometimes I like to fight you. All right, just going to touch up the foot where I didn't get quite all the way in between his nails. All right, that's good. All right, now I'm going to do the tail. I think I'm going to paint the tail with this dwarf skin color that we rejected for his actual skin earlier. I think it will be a, an excellent color for his tail. Just going to pop this open. Alrighty. And just painted this whole tail. Oh yeah. It's a quite a nice color. Probably gonna need a couple layers for this. Because it is such a bright color. Some of the primer that they've put on this miniature will show through. That's okay. Go all the way up. This spine tail is going to be slightly annoying to paint because of all the ins and outs. But if you pick this miniature up, um, you hopefully will not be trying to paint it in an hour. I'm painting in an hour so that my stream can be concise and to the point, but you can take all the time you need. So annoyances like this will be non-existent for the vast majority of people here. Which is good. You should always take... You shouldn't spend an astronomical amount of time on each miniature, but you should take the time you need on each miniature. If you've, if you've spent a week on a miniature and you're still only done a tiny little part, maybe it's time to move on. But if you spend a couple hours on a tail or even a day on a tail... Not a big deal. Just remember the quote that I've been repeating as often as I can ever since I heard it from Vince Venturella, who's a YouTuber and professional painter. Um, perfect is the opposite of done. You can either have something perfect or you can have it done. If it's perfect, there's, well, since there's no way to achieve the perfect miniature, that means that you will never be done with it. And since it can only be done if it's not perfect, they are opposites. And so you should always try to aim for done, not for perfect. Perfect is unobtainable. Done is obtainable. And then you can move on to your next miniature and make it better. Better is always obtainable. Perfect, not obtainable. But if you just get better than your first miniature, and then when you paint your third miniature, you get better than your second miniature... That's all you can really ever hope for, to be honest. One day, maybe, someone... Highly unlikely. But maybe someday, someone will paint the perfect miniature. And we'll look at it, and we'll think it is exact... It'll, it's just real life. It's like, wow, why isn't that person moving? But until then... 
don't try to strive for perfect just try to strive for done and better and hey if you're painting for the first time you don't even have to strive for better you just have to strive for done so look at that it's even easier to get into painting all right tail is covered mostly just a couple little spikes in here all right sounds good let's move on to some washes i think so we have two washes here sepia and flesh so to start off we're just going to just going to follow what the colors call themselves flesh wash we're going to put it on his flesh we're going to put it on his skin and then i'm going to put it on his tail also i think but we just painted his tail so we don't want to apply a wash yet until it dries off a little bit so we won't do that quite yet but we'll move to the sepia wash for some other things and then come back to flesh wash so just gave that a good shake i'm going to take it on my brush just like a normal paint and i'm just going to go all over the all over the face you can do this darker lighter however you prefer you can do multiple coats you can do one coat wash is very forgiving Make sure to get all of the face here and just get it out. If it's pooling too much, just get it out of there. All right, and I think, um, hmm. no, we're going to come back to flesh wash. We did it on his face. I think we're going to apply it in a couple other places also, but for now, we're just going to do on his face. So we're going to go to sepia wash here, just sort of a, a medium brown color. We're going to put this on his skin and possibly on his wings. We'll have to see. Sepia wash, depending on who makes it, can be lighter or darker. Uh, it may not be dark enough to really do anything to our wings, but we'll see. Definitely is going to do something to our skin color here. So I'm just going just gonna to cover the whole thing here with this wash. This will be another time where you could use a bigger brush if you want. But I think it'll apply just fine with this one. Just make sure to get it into all the nooks and crannies. Four-armed creatures or four-appendage creatures tend to have quite a few nooks and crannies. As you can see, this is this is darkening our darkening our skin tone quite a bit. And so, if you if you didn't want it to be this dark, you could either a thin down your wash a little bit, or b you could paint back over your wash with the same color, just making sure to leave the wash in the recesses of your miniature. Um, however, for me, this is going to work just fine. I don't mind it darkening down because I want the mane to stand out. So, just gonna get to this leg and then the back side of this leg. And make sure I got it all under here. I did get his back here. Alrighty, I think that is everything. Oh, right back here underneath there all right so there's the wash applied to his skin just giving us a little bit of definition so then i think hmm i think i'll do the same wash on the tail just to blend them a little bit into each other not they obviously won't be the same color because they i use different base coats on them but the same color wash will just blend them a little bit together and make them feel more like they're part of the same creature. So let's just get it all in there. And your paint might not be completely dry. 
at this point, especially in the recesses up here. I'm not worried about it. I'm just going to go over it and it'll blend in a little bit, change the color slightly. Sounds good. Organic creatures are not all the same color. So maybe he bumped that part on a rock or something. Who knows? All right. So that's that wash in the tail. So then I think we may come back to wash, but first we're going to, well, I'm looking at this main. I think we're going to use the flesh wash in the main here. So I'm going back to the flesh wash. I'm just going to coat the main with it. And then we're going to move on to the highlighting steps. Um, actually, I'm going to see what this looks like on the wings. If I put it here. Oh, yeah, that changes the color significantly. So I'm just going to do this in between the wing. Um, I guess, I don't know what you'd call these. The, like, the fingers of the wings. I'm just going to do this in between them. Just for some, some visual interest up here. Making sure not to hit the, the fingers. Just to get the skin part between them. And get all the way down here. And this one also. And then the one in the front here. Good. Do it on the other wing. here and I'm actually not going to do this on the bottom of the wings um, just because I want the bottoms to be darker like they're in shadow so I'm not going to change the color too much uh, shadow as well as darkening things will also uh, lose you color definition meaning you'll lose the ability to t uh, tell two colors apart so to mimic that sort of we are not going to put this second color on the bottom like it's all in shadow so there's that, just so the skin of the wings is a little bit different than the other wings. Now I'm just going to rinse my brush off, and then I'm going to put this all over the mane. Just all in here. I too like dwarf skin on my tail. Okay. To each his own, I guess. So just getting all this in here. Getting it all over. And then as soon as I do this, we're going to move on to the highlighting part, which is one of my favorite parts of the miniature. When you just have base coats and washes, the miniature look, can look a little dirty and almost look like you've ruined it, to be honest, in some cases. You just have to power through that and get to the highlighting step. And you can, you can get a lot done with the highlighting step to really bring out the quality of your paint job all right so there's that wash so he's now been completely washed with color so now let's move on to highlights so let's grab first we got two whites in here we've got off white and we have bone white they are just slightly different we've got a kind of amusingly the bone white is an off white and the off white is pretty much solid white so we're going to start with the bone white. And I'm going to do his teeth, his fingernails, uh, the spikes on his wings. And I think that's it with this color. I'm sure I might find something else along the way. But for right now, that's all we're going to do. So I'm going to switch to the thinner brush that they gave me in this kit. They gave us. Because hopefully you'll go pick it up also. And... Just gonna touch the teeth with this color. Not worrying too much about completely covering them because they're inside a mouth. And so if there's some darker spots, that's either what's behind it or the gum around it or whatever. Not a big deal. Just so that there's some definition in there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the nails. Just like this. I 
final work. The nails on his legs here. Dang wing blocking out all my light. So rude. All right, then do this other nail or this other foot back here. Not too worried about getting paint on the base. We're gonna paint it anyway, so not a problem. All right, then I'm gonna get these spikes on the wings up here. And a spike also. All right, and then I'm gonna get these spikes that are in his mane here. So you can see there's some, there's some hair, but then there's also these longer, thicker pieces here, which are spikes. So we're just gonna paint them in this off-white color, or the bone color, I guess, bone white. I guess the description of this color is off-white. The title of this color is bone white. And then the other white, the description in my mind would be pure white, but the title is off-white. So, you know, what are you going to do, though? As long as they're the colors you want, it doesn't really matter what they're called. Making sure to get every one of the spikes. Don't want to leave any out. Just got a couple poking out there. Oh, there's one right up here. All right. That should be now all the spikes. Um, and then we can look at his tail. And I think we'll do the same thing on his tail. Um, maybe not these bigger spikes back here. But the smaller spikes on his tail? Mm, nope, I've changed my mind. We're not doing that. All right, I'm gonna actually take one more dot of this off white here, this bone white, and just put a dot in each eyeball like that. And like that. We'll come back and do some more detail on these eyes in a minute. Get in there. All right. We'll let that dry in there and then we'll come back and highlight it up and do some fixing. So then I think I am going to go, I'm going to grab this color that I haven't used yet, tan, and I'm going to do some dry brushing. Now this, unfortunately, I will have to use a different brush for. Uh, neither of the brushes they give you are really conducive to dry brushing. Um, of course, dry brushing is not a necessity, so that is perhaps why they didn't give us one. Um, I'm just going to use a Big old brush. Um, this one, no. I'm gonna use, no, I am. I'm gonna use my big makeup brush for this. Just like this. So I'm gonna get some of this paint. Just gonna take a big old makeup brush here, dip it in this color, get some on there. And then I'm just gonna, on this paper towel I have next to me, just kinda wipe most of it off, but also get it onto the other bristles. Just getting most of the paint off the brush though. Keep going. All right, so then as you can see now, the bristles all have some paint on it, but it's mostly gone. And then I'm just gonna come over to these wings here and I'm just gonna gently go back and forth on these wings to bring out the edges of them. Just keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And so now you can see the difference between that wing and this wing. So then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other wing. And this will get all the little veins in the wings that might be annoying to paint by hand. Um, all the fingers on the wings. I'm actually gonna go back to this one make sure it's fully done. Then I'm gonna go to the front of the wings here and get that. 
and get up here and do all that. I'm going to go lightly on the bottom, but again, we want to try to be losing our definition on the bottoms of these wings because they're in shadow. So it's not a not super important. But there you go. Now the wings are have been dry brushed. So we're going to do the same thing with the tail. Um, however, we're going to use a different color for that. And I think... Hmm. I think we're going to use our bone white for that. Ooh. Knock my manticore over. So we're going to take the bone white out again. Um, we're going to use a same, the same type of brush, a big old makeup brush, but slightly smaller this time because the tail is a smaller part. Just like this. Again, same thing. Going to get some paint on the brush and wipe most of it off. And when I say wipe most of it off, I mean most of it off. You want very little paint left on your brush. And then I'm just going to come in up here and just very lightly put some some of this bone white on the tail. Put it back here. Yep, just like that. Making sure to get the tips of each spike because that's the, the part that will stand out the most for you. Catch this paint. Like that. And then with the same thing, we're just going to come along and just very slightly dry brush the fingers of these wings. Just so they're slightly brighter than our tan gave us. Just going to go along like that. And then we're going to do the same thing to the face here. Just to give it a little more brightness. We are going to do a highlight layer, but still. And then we're going to just do the hands of hands and feet of the skin. Just like that. And like this. And then all the way up to the knees, maybe. Knees again. And the foot. All right. Then I think we can move on to some actual highlighting. So I'm going to take the cadmium skin. This is the lightest color that they've given us in terms of a skin tone. And I'm going to get my thinnest brush that they gave me. And I'm just going to get a little bit here. Then I'm going to go into the skin and I'm just going to paint little lines on the creases of the skin. So there's one here. Just go along like this. And come down. Same thing on the other side. Then under the eyeballs here, where we use a little too much white, we're just going to go along there, like this, along these eyebrow looking things. And do that. Then along the ridge of the chin here. And along the lip. And the upper lip. Tip of the nose. And then these two little lines right here. Just like that. Now our face has a little more definition to it. Alright, and then... We're going to take our pale yellow, and I'm just going to highlight the mane. Same way we just did the face, but this time on the mane. Take our pale yellow, and just kind of pick out some little spots here, maybe. And just follow the ridges of the hair. It does not by any means have to be perfect. Or consistent just so that there's some visual difference between different parts of the hair so now that we have our base coat our shade and this it'll start to look like a big jumble of 
different colored things with raised parts and lowered parts and all sorts of stuff like that. So I'm just going to go in like this. Touch some of the ridges up here. Again, this does not need to be perfect. It is hair. It looks a little inconsistent. And not only is it hair, it's hair that's on a wild beast. Something tells me he's not going to the salon and getting his hair uh, perfectly cut and colored. I could be wrong. Look, I mean, you do what you want in your D&D &D campaigns. But in my, any d and I've ever played, the manticores aren't going to the salon. All right, so we're almost done with this guy now, at least as far as we're gonna go on this stream. So I'm just gonna take some of this, what they're calling off-white, but I would call bright white. And I'm just gonna to touch it to the end of everything we painted with the off, or with the, uh, the bone white color, just so there's a little more definition on each one of these. My pale yellow is leaking, oh no. Not actually leaking, it just fell off the top. Not a big deal. So I'm just going to do this on the top of every one of these horns. Like this. And like that. Good. Um, I think not on the nails. I'll keep the nails sort of an off-white color. Uh, yeah, that looks good to me. So now I'm just going to do a simple base on this guy just to finish him up. Um, if you are going to paint him with just the supplies in the kit, um, you could paint it, paint the base a darker color, and then put a wash on it, maybe put a second layer of wash on it, dry brush it or highlight it or whatever you want to do. In this case, though, I'm going to use some texture paint, some flock, and maybe a tuft or two just to, to go a little crazy on it. So first, I'm going to take some texture paint. Um, take some Sterling Mud by Citadel. And I'm just going to put it all over the base. So I've got a little shovel scraper tool here. So I'm just going to take some of this, spread it all over. You could do this with non-texture paint, to be honest, this technique I'm about to do. Um, you just need paint that isn't going to dry before you get done covering the whole base. Um, I like texture paint because A, it has a texture, so it leaves, if you, uh, if you don't completely cover it like we're about to, then you can go back and, uh, or rather, just the texture will show underneath the, the flock we're going to use. But you can absolutely use normal paint. Just have to make sure to do it quickly so that your flock has something to stick to. And technically, you shouldn't be using paint to stick flock. I say you shouldn't. It's not a recommended practice because paint is not technically an adhesive. You should use an adhesive, but we're going for speed. And speed requires that I don't bust out the glue and thin it down, put it all over the base. It's just a mess, and this is just so much easier. So I'm just covering all the bits of the base with it. If it gets up on him a little bit, it's not a problem. Again, I don't think he's taking regular baths. If he's a little dirty, it'll be okay. Just going to get some more of this and spread it around over here. Let's see here. Yep. I think it might go a little, because he's very brown, because I painted him with just the colors out of this kit, we want our, our base maybe to do a little more work than it might normally have to. And by a little more work, I mean give a little more interest and excitingness to the person who's viewing our miniature. So because of that, just add a little more color possibly than I normally would. To a base like this. 
So maybe we'll bust out some flower tufts or something like that. So I'm just going to cover like this. It's almost out of texture paint here. I'll have to grab some more, but it should be plenty for this right here. Just making sure that our white primed base isn't showing through. And just wipe off the extra over here. And then get the front here. I'm going to switch to a paintbrush for this last part because it's right under his nails. So I want to be a little more precise. The flexibility of the paintbrush, the physical flexibility of the bristles will uh, help to get in there. All right. So there he is, all texture painted up. So then, I'm just gonna take our, got some flock here. Um, what else do we wanna put on there? Maybe some leaves, why not? So I've got some miniature leaves here. They're from Green Stuff World. I've got some, some sort of brown and some red autumn color. I'm just going to take a couple of these with some tweezers and just kind of scatter them on his base like that. It doesn't have to be tons, just a couple. Do the same thing with this red autumn color. Just grab some, scatter it around there, just throw it on wherever it'll go. Okay. All right, that looks good. Just blow off the extra, and then we're gonna pull him off his base, or off the, uh, not off his base, off the paint handle. Let's get these leaves over, and I just got a cup of, it's in a Talenti cup, but just some flock from the Army Painter. This is grass green. So his base is still covered in wet texture paint so i'm just going to put him in here and swirl him around a little bit to get the texture paint covered in this flock just get him mix him around there dump off the extra as you can see the leaves still the uh the flock does not stick to the leaves it just sticks to the texture paint so we still got some of those leaves scattered around his base there. And then just for some added fun, I'm going to take some, these are also from Green Stuff World, just some purple flower tufts. And they are self-adhesive. I'm just gonna grab a couple with the tweezers. And let's see, maybe I'll put one here. Just like that. Stick it down there. And then maybe another one over here. And just grab it and push it down in there so it stays. And that's good. And then could add another one, but I think I'll be done. I think that'll be it. So I'm just going to stick him back on the paint handle. And yeah, there you go. There's your... Let me zoom out. And there's a completed Manticore. Not the most high fidelity paint job in the world, but absolutely got the job done. Should be easy for beginners to complete this sort of paint project. No problem. Um, again, I'm, if you've already heard this spiel now twice, I apologize. But if you want to get this kit, um, it comes with all the paints I used, uh, two brushes, a little water pot, and a palette for mixing paint. All the basing supplies I used are not in that kit, um, but they are available for purchase. Um, so you get all the brushes, the paint, the miniature, all that. Um, if you do pick one up, paint them up, send completed pictures into Galactic. Uh, by September 5th 
uh, you will be your miniature painting will be judged based on how well how much we like it. Uh, the our favorite will be selected to win fifty dollars in store credit. Our second favorite will win twenty five dollars in store credit. Um, but otherwise, uh, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, I'll be back on this channel again next Wednesday, painting something else D and D related, possibly a dragon if I can figure that out. Um, otherwise, I'll be back on my normal stream in the Warhammer group, painting some Warhammer stuff on Friday. Other than that, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time.